The Everglades protects a very unique ecosystem like none other. Uh, there's a biodiversity found here that is unique uh, to North America. Uh, you have a temperate ecosystem colliding with a tropical ecosystem and thus wildlife that's uh, not found anywhere else, uh, even on our planet. The Everglades. South Florida's fragile ecosystem is facing a threat on a scale never before seen in the form of non-native animals known as invasive species. So invasive species are non-native species uh, that can inflict a lot of damage on an ecosystem, uh, both in terms of affecting the native wildlife uh, and also having an economic impact on the national park. An invasive species is a, an animal that is not native to a certain area and it has a detrimental effect on the ecosystem of that area. The python is uh, invasive and it can grow to be 200 pounds and 20 feet long and it becomes top of the food chain. So actually the python can destroy the whole natural food chain of the Everglades and to have a healthy environment you have to have a healthy food chain. So the Burmese python is a non-native species that's invasive in the state of Florida and what that means is that it's causing some sort of impact in our ecosystem. So right now we know that they're impacting our native fish and wildlife um, and um, there's also social or economic impacts as well. So people who may not want to come down to Florida because they're afraid that if they go into the Everglades they could encounter a python. So this is a Burmese python. The, these snakes are native to Southeast Asia, places like India, Burma, uh, places over on that side of the world. So they're not supposed to be here in Florida, but they are now. Right now, this guy is pretty small. He's only um, about uh, one and a half years old, but it won't take much longer before he becomes a much larger snake. These snakes can get up to 20 feet long. In Florida, the record currently is 18 feet, eight inches, and that's when uh, these guys are gonna become a real problem for some of our native wildlife, because these are predators, and they're uh, generalist predators at that, meaning they'll eat uh, just about any wildlife that they can, uh, they feel like they can tackle. And so it's a, become a real problem in the Florida Everglades, and so we wanna make sure that people are aware that these are non-native, and that we do promote uh, uh, members of the public going out and helping us remove these pythons so long as they can do so in a safe manner. At Sawgrass Recreation Park, no one would know the dangers of the Burmese python better than the reptile keepers. Hi, my name is Troy. I'm a reptile keeper here at Sawgrass Recreation Park. This is my partner here. My name is Nick. Uh, I'm also a reptile keeper here at Sawgrass. And uh, this is our Burmese python. They are invasive species, which means that they don't, they're not from here. However, they've pretty much taken over. They're amongst the top five largest snakes. The females are typically a lot larger, anywhere ranging from 15 and up. However, the males, they'll typically stay a lot smaller. An animal of this size can eat a lot. And the trouble with these animals is that even when they're babies, they are going to be eating mice and rats. And even once they are to this size, they are still capable of taking down rats, which means that they will not be shifting their prey items. They will be constantly putting pressures on the populations of animals they target. And this is very bad because these animals will now have no chance for the populations to rebound. And this can wipe out a lot of our native species. While the python is the invader of the glades, the lionfish is the python of the ocean. So lionfish are extremely invasive here in Florida. That means they're not from here. They're originally from the Indo-Pacific. 
Um, they're thought to come here from the aquarium trade. The first sighting of lionfish in Florida was off the coast of Miami in 1984. Um, since then, their populations have exploded. So they can get pr a pretty decent size. Um, they are edible, even though they are venomous. So you can see, if you can see the lionfish here, they do have 13 venomous spines on the top dorsal fin. They'll have one on each pelvic fin on the underside of them, as well as three spines on their anal fin, with a total of 18 venomous spines. Uh, lionfish is uh, it's an invasive species to Florida. It's a South Pacific animal in the ocean, and it has been introduced into the Florida waters. And it has no natural predators, so there's nothing to control the population of the lionfish. Lionfish are very detrimental to our reef systems here, um, again, because they don't have anything that's uh, it's not controlling the population. There's no predators that will eat or control that population. And because of that, the lionfish will reproduce and reproduce and reproduce. And um, they eat everything on the reef. So they start, over time will start to uh, destroy the reef. Beyond the glades in the ocean, the invasives are breeding right in our own neighborhood. Um, so it was one night, it was 11 o'clock at night, we were letting the dogs out for their final walk and they went out, came back in, gave them their treats and then Brandy just started acting a little funny. Um, she ended up going into a full seizure. We didn't know what was going on so we thought maybe she ate something, wasn't feeling well. A couple minutes later she started losing her bowel control, um, seizing again so we grabbed her, took her to a 24-hour vet and they kept her there, put her on intravenous. The cane toad, AKA the bufo toad, is a non-native reptile that poses a lethal danger to our pets. The large toads are known for their poisonous secretions on their backs. If ingested, these can cause seizures and even death for our own beloved pets. Um, luckily she was okay because she's a pretty big dog, but if it was a smaller dog, you know, they probably would not have made it. Take something with you. Uh, whether it's a broom, the frogs aren't going to really hurt you, but you want to be able to shoo them away because when you do come across them or the dog runs up to them, they don't move. They will just stay there. Some of them are really, really big. <laughs> so they're not afraid of the dogs and they're not afraid of you. Although invasive species like the python, lionfish, and cane toad are in the news every day, other invasives such as the iguana, black and white tegu, and the Toke gecko also pose a threat to our ecosystem. An invasive species doesn't just apply to animals. Malaluka trees are native to Australia, and when they were first brought to Florida in the early part of the 1900s, uh, their strict purpose was uh, to provide windbreaks. Uh, but most importantly to actually assist in draining the Everglades. Uh, the goal was to develop South Florida and to provide uh, areas where cities could be built. And so their biggest threat is that they drain uh, the water that is found here, the limited water resources that we have in the Everglades. Invaders of all kind are wreaking havoc on Florida's many fragile ecosystems. But with like-minded people working together, there is hope. Good morning, everyone. Well, welcome on behalf of a, a tremendous partnership with uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, the South Florida Water Management District. Welcome to this morning's event on the Python Bowl. So the Florida Python Challenge is an event that we've been holding every few years that helps bring awareness to this really important issue in our Everglades ecosystem. The Everglades ecosystem is a treasure. It's a national treasure that this um, these python challenges bring a lot of attention to. We help engage our citizens in helping us remove pythons from the ecosystem. The python challenge and everyone that is educated and understand that everyone that enters this is part of an environmental hunt. This event is all about public awareness, education, 
and learning how to be safe in the field, get the word out there and engage our public in this really important conservation initiative. So I want to get behind it and I want to get it so it's on the move. And I'm going to pin it right behind the head. Just like that, that way I can get my hand on it. The Python Challenge is a competition that enlists hunters to catch as many pythons as they can for a chance to win an ATV, prize money, and more. We tagged along with one of the hunters to see what it was really like. Being, being born and raised down here and enjoying the outdoors, I, uh, I'm an avid fisherman. Uh, used to hunt a lot, but more of an avid fisherman now, and I just, um, I love the beautiful um, ecosystem of the Everglades, and it just, uh, something I just felt like, hey, I got to get involved with this. Uh, I love snakes and never been afraid of snakes. Florida king snake. It's a non-venomous snake down here in Florida. Um, this is honestly my first one I've found out here in the Holy Lands Rottenburger area. All right, well, now that the sun's going down, uh, this is optimal time right now. We want to make sure the temperature doesn't get too low but uh, we're gonna work the, the dirt roads, see what we see on the roads, because it's, it's, they stick out like a sore thumb on the road. Um, we're gonna find some pockets of some water, go down and uh, uh, see if we can find anything in the water, and then any rocky areas around bridges, um, overturned logs, uh, places of uh, structure, um, debris, and uh, just see what we can, uh, see what we can uh, find. So we're on the, the south side levee right now, and we're coming up to where the Holy Lands and Rottenburger uh, meet up. There are two management areas out here. So right now what I'm looking for, I'm looking for animal sign, raccoon prints, deer prints, uh, the tracks. Where there's food, there's snakes. All right, so we came up empty-handed tonight. Um, we got skunked but that's why they call it hunting, not catching. So it's, there's no guarantees. We've had 750 people apply to go out and hunt pythons. That's incredible. 20 different states, from 20 different states around America. <laughs> 10 days ago, guess how many pythons we caught? 80. 80 is the number.